Good day everyone, today I will be discussing to you the ratio and some exercises and examples about this topic. First, let us define what is a ratio. A ratio is a comparison of comparison by division of two numbers. So we can use the following, the following sign. We have the colon, the following symbol. We have the over. Given two numbers, A and B, where B is not equal to zero, so this is our condition, because B is our denominator, B must not be equal to zero, because if B is zero, that will give us undefined. The ratio can be written in any of the three following ways. Okay, so our ratio can be written as A over B, A is to B, or A to B. Okay. Let's have our example number one. Mark and Luke obtained 36 and 45 points respectively. In their math quiz, express the scores of Mark and Luke as ratio. So, Mark scored 36 while Luke scored 45. So we have 36 over 45. 36 and 45 can be reduced into lowest term. So they are both divisible by 9. So 9, 18, 27, 36 over 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. So 4 over 5. Express as ratio. So our final answer will be 4 is to 5. Let's have our example number 2. Example number 2. The measures of the two consecutive angles of a parallelogram are in the ratio 5 is to 7. Find their measures. Notice in our problem, we have the given ratio 5 is to 7. That is the measure of of the consecutive angles of the parallelogram. So we're going to represent first. So let 5x and 7x be the angles of parallelogram. Okay. So, where do we get 5 and 7? So, that is in our ratio, given ratio. Then we need to solve for x. We know that consecutive angles of parallelogram are supplementary. So, if we're going to add the two ratio, so 5x plus 7x, that is equal to, supplementary is equal to 180. So we have 5x plus 7x, that is 12x, is equal to 180. Finally, to get x, divide by 12. x is equal to, so 180 divided by 12, that is, so 180 divided by 12, so we have 1, 12, subtract. 8 minus 2, 6, 0. So 60 divided, 60 divided by 12, that is 5. So 15. So 180 divided by 12 is 15. Now, find their measures. So what are the measures of our angles? So we just need to substitute. So 5 times, so 5x is equal to 5 times substitute 15 so 5 times 15 that is 75 degrees and the other one is 7x is equal to 7 times 15 that is 105 to check their sum must be 180. So 75 plus 105 is 100, uh, 180. 
So the two consecutive angles are supplementary. So correct. 75 and 105. Now let's have our example number 3. Now let's have example number 3. The angle is 40 degrees more than its supplement. Find the ratio of the angle to its supplement. So first step, we need to represent. So let x be the supplement of the angle and the angle is 40 so 40 more than the supplement so x plus 40 measure of the angle okay now after the representation go back to the given find the ratio of the angle to its supplement so now we need to find first the measure of the angles again we have our clue word the supplement so if we're going to add the two x plus x plus 40 that is equal to 180 so x plus x that is 2x is equal to 180 minus 40 so 2x is equal to 140. Finally, divide by 2, x is equal to 70. So x is equal to 70. So 70. And the measure of the angle is 70 plus 40, that is 110. Find the ratio of the angle to its supplement. So the angle is 110 is to 70. So can be reduced in lowest term, that is equal to 11 is to 7. So this will be our final answer, 11 is to 7. So that is the definition of ratio and exercises about it. Thank you for watching, senior. Good day everyone, today I will be discussing to you the proportion. First let us define what is a proportion. A proportion is an equation in which two ratios are equal. So let's say we have A over B is equal to C over D. So our first ratio and our second ratio. That can be written as A is to B is equal to C is to D. Wherein, in this case, B is not equal to zero and D is not equal to zero. B and D are not equal to 0 because if B and D are 0, it will give us undefined. A, B, C, and D are what we call the terms. So A, B, C, and D are the terms of our proportion. While A and D is what we call the extremes and BC is what we call the means. Okay, now we have the fundamental law of proportion. The product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. So if we're going to multiply or get the product of our ratio, so A is to B is equal to C is to D. To multiply, so the product of the extremes, so A times D, that is AD is equal to the product of the means B times C, BC. So that would be equal. Now let's try to solve some problems regarding the proportion. Now let us apply the fundamental law of proportion to solve some problems. Direction, find the value of the indicated variable in each proportion. Letter A, 10 is to 5 is equal to K is to 4. So using the fundamental law of proportion, the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. So 5 times x, this is our means, so that is 5, uh, 5 times k, that is 5k, is equal to 10 times 4, that is 40. 
Now, to get the value of the variable k, so we need to divide by 5, k is equal to 8. Okay. Now, the other way is, we can write this ratio into fraction, so that is 10 over 5 is equal to k over 4. So we can use cross multiplication technique, so 5 times k, that is 5k, is equal to 10 times 4, that is 40. Divide by 5, so k is equal to 8. So we will come up with the same answer. So let us apply our the cross multiplication technique in number uh, letter B, C, and D. Because it is in fraction form. So x times x, that is x squared, is equal to 9 times 4, that is 36. Get the square root to get our variable. So x is equal to positive negative square root of 36. 36 is a perfect square number, so that is 6. Next, letter C. Okay, same process. Cross multiply, so we have 10 times m plus 5 is equal to m times 11. 10 times m, that is 10m, plus 10 times 5, that is 50, is equal to 11m. So, remain 50 here, is equal to 11m, move to the right, minus 10m. So, 50 is equal to m. And finally, letter D, cross multiply, so we have 10 times y plus 11 is equal to negative 3 times y minus 2. Distribute 10 times y, that is 10y, 10 times 11 plus 110 is equal to negative 3y times y, negative 3y, negative 3 times negative 2, positive 6. So 10y plus 3y is equal to copy 6 minus 110. Now 10y plus 3y that is 30y is equal to 6 minus 110 that is negative 104. Divide by 13, 13. So y is equal to 104 divided by 13. So pass, uh, negative divided by positive, that will just give us negative. So our answer is... is 8, 13 times 8. So 8, 16, 24. 4 carry 2, 8, 9, 10, 104. So y is equal to 8. Now, to check your answer, you can substitute the value of the unknown variables. And good day, everyone. Today, I will be discussing to you the properties of proportions. So we have three properties. Number one, the terms in a proportion can be inverted. So let's say we have A over B is equal to C over D. So if we're going to invert, a over B, that will become B over A, is equal to C over D invert, that will become D over C. And they are equivalent. So take note, A, B, C, and D must not be equal to zero. So let us apply our property number one to solve this problem. Let's say we have 12 over X is equal to 2 over 10. So the terms can be inverted. So, 12 over x, invert, that will become x over 12 is equal to, invert, 10 over 2. Now, cross multiply, so we have 2 times x, that is 2x, is equal to 12 times 10, that is 120. To get the value of x, divide by 2, so x is equal to 60. Okay. Next, property number two. 
The opposite terms of a proportion can be interchanged. Let's say we have A over B is equal to C over D. That is equal to A over C. A over C is equal to B over D. And D over B is equal to C over A. And they are equivalent. So in this case, so our numerator, so it can be interchanged. So our numerator here is A and C. So this will become A over C. And in this case, is equal to B over D. And same case, D over B is equal to C over A. So using the same given, let us prove or let us check using our property number 2 if we will come up with the same answer. So 12 over x is equal to 2 over 10. Now interchange. So in this case, we can interchange as 12 over 2 a over c is equal to b over d x over 10 b over d now cross multiply that will become 2 times x 2x is equal to 12 times 10 120 are they the same so 2x is equal to 120 2x is equal to 120 divide by 2 so our x now is equal to 120 divided by 2 60 uh, the same case if we're going to use d over b so if we're going to use d over b 10 over x is equal to c over a 2 over 12 so x times 2 that is 2x is equal to 10 times 12 120 now let us proceed to our property number 3 the denominator can be added or subtracted from the numerator on each side of the proportion. Let's say we have a over b is equal to c over a. That is equal to a plus b over b. So just add b, then c plus d over a, or uh, over d. So just add d in the numerator. Or subtract. Add or subtract. And they are equivalent. Take note a, b, c, and d, oh, b, d our denominator must not be equal to zero now using the same given let us prove 12 over x is equal to 2 over 10 so 12 plus the denominator which is x over x is equal to 2 plus denominator 10 all over denominator 10 Combine like terms, so it will become 12 plus x over x is equal to 2 plus 10, that is 12 over 10. Now, cross multiply, x times 12, that is 12x is equal to 10 times 12, that is 120 plus 10 times x, 10x. So, 12x. 10x move to the left minus 10x is equal to 120. So 12x minus 10x is equal to 120. So it will become 12 minus 10, that is 2x is equal to 120. So divide by 2, x is equal to 60. So whatever property you're going to use in our proportion, you will come up with the same answer. So that's the properties of proportion. Thank you for watching Senior Pablo TV.